Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this concept that is pole. Okay. Actually, it is one type of isolated singularity. Isolated singularity and non-isolated singularity we have already discussed in previous video, but we will recall that concept and then we will go for this concept pole. Okay. Singular points, that means a point where the function is not analytic. Suppose we have a function like this, z, z minus 2. You can easily see, if I put z is equal to 0, the denominator will be 0. That means for z is equal to 0, the function is not analytic. So that's why it is a singular point. Similarly, if I put z is equal to 2, then also the denominator will be 0 and function won't be analytic. Okay, so that is also singularity. So here the function has two singularities, z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 2. So what is isolated and non-isolated singularities? If two singularities are away from each other, so z is equal to 0 here and z is equal to 2 here, they are away from each other, so they are separate, separate. There is some distance between them, so we call them as isolated singularity, isolated, okay, isolated means separate, separate. And the second type is non-isolated singularity. Second type is non-isolated, that means those singularities are or those singular points are very close to each other. Those are very close to each other. You cannot make them separate. Okay, so such type of singularity is called non-isolated singularity. So now in this video, we are going to talk about this pole. So pole is one type of isolated singularity. Okay, it is one type of isolated singularity. So let us discuss its definition. Okay, let me remove this part. It is not required. Okay. So let us see when we can say any point z0 is a pole, okay. If z0 is a singular point of f of z, so if z0 is any singular point, okay, that means at z0 the function is not analytic and, and Lorentz expansion of f of z at z is equal to z naught is okay. So by uh, using Lorentz series expansion, we find it is pole or not, and if it is pole, then we find its order. So Lorentz expansion of f of z about z is equal to z naught is f of z is equal to summation n running from 0 to infinity a n z minus z naught plus 2 n plus b 1 upon z minus z naught plus b 2 upon z minus z naught square plus and so on b n upon z minus z naught plus 2 n. Okay, so Lorentz expansion of f of z about z is equal to z naught is this one okay we are already familiar with Lorentz expansion so let us discuss first what is the standard Lorentz expansion then we will compare this one with standard one okay so what is standard Lorentz expansion the standard Lorentz expansion is like this f of z is equal to summation n running from 0 to infinity a n z minus z naught is to n and the second part n running from 1 to infinity b n upon z minus z naught is twin. In standard Lorentz expansion uh, has two parts. So this is called analytic part. Okay. And this is called principal part. This is principal part and this is analytic part. In analytic part that that bracket z minus z naught appears at numerator. In principal part, this bracket appears in denominator. Okay, it is in denominator here, it is in numerator. So you can easily compare. Okay, so the analytic part is same. There is no any change. But see in the principal part, it is expected to have infinitely many terms. But here we are having just finitely many terms. What is our last term? Bn. Okay, Bn upon z minus z naught is to n. But here we have infinitely many terms. That means all remaining coefficients are zero. And let me continue this one, bn plus 1, bn plus 2, and so on. All remaining bns are 0. What is our last non-zero bn? That is this bn, okay? 
so yes this is n term where it terminates and all remaining terms are zero that means in a principal part we have finite number of terms how many terms we have bn and what is the highest power of this bracket n so in that case we say z is equal to z naught is a pole of order n okay then z is equal to z naught is called pole of order n okay so this is definition of pole pole means what if you expand f of z about z is equal to z naught principal part should have finite number of terms okay after some particular bn all remaining bn should be zero then the highest power of this bracket which appears in denominator that is order of that pole z is equal to z naught is a pole of order n so this is the definition of pole after that we will discuss few examples so the concept will be clear to you okay just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so let us discuss this example in this example we have a function one upon z z minus one okay so we have to find a singular point first singular point that means for which point denominator will be zero or the function is not analytic you can easily see if I put z is equal to 0, denominator will be 0. And if I put z is equal to 1, then also denominator 0. That means 0 and 1 are singular points. Clearly, z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 1 are singular points. Okay, so now I will find order of the first of all, we will prove these are poles and we will find their orders. Okay. Let us talk about zero first. So I have to find Lorentz expansion of this function about z is equal to zero. That means everywhere we should have z, z, z. What will I do? I will take minus sign common here. So it will look like this minus sign common. So it will be plus and z will be minus. So why I have taken minus sign common since I have to use this series. This is very standard series. Okay. 1 upon 1 minus z that is 1 plus z plus z square plus z cube plus and so on provided mod z less than 1. So this is very standard series and frequently we use it. So this series we can use here for this 1 upon 1 minus z. Let me make them separate. So minus 1 by z I am taking out and 1 upon 1 minus z. I can use the expansion minus 1 by z. The series says it is 1 plus z plus z square plus z cube plus and so on provided mod z less than 1. Now what will I do? I will multiply each term by z. So it will be, oh sorry, 1 by z. So let us multiply minus 1 by z. z, z cancel. z, 1 z will get cancelled. So z will be there. Minus 1 by z into z cube. So minus z square and so on. So this is Lorentz expansion of f of z at z is equal to 0. So here z appears at numerator. So this is the analytic part. And here z appears in denominator. So this is the principal part. So in principal part, there is only one term. So that's why obviously it is a pole since principal part is having finitely number of terms. Okay, finite number of terms. So let me mention therefore, therefore z is equal to 0 is a pole of order. Now we have to find its order. How to find order? By observing its power. What is its power? Highest power of that 1 by z is 1. So z is equal to 0 is pole of order 1. So now we will prove that z is equal to 1 is also pole and we will find its order. Just make a screenshot of it then we will go further. So now let us prove that z is equal to 1 is also a pole. Okay, and we will find its order. See, uh, z is equal to 1 we have to prove. So that means z minus 1, this bracket should appear everywhere. Okay, so z minus 1 is already there. We need to adjust this bracket at this place. Let us do. It's very simple task, no? So I am writing for z minus 1 on this side and z on that side. 1 upon z minus 1. z is there, that means z minus 1 plus 1 getting z minus 1 plus 1 so i have simply adjusted plus 1 minus 1 because z minus 1 we should have okay see here uh, 
See, there is one more series like this, that is 1 upon 1 plus z, which is looks same, but it's having alternating plus and minus signs. Okay, so and having a same condition, mod z less than 1. So I'm going to use this series here. But let me write it properly first. So 1 upon z minus 1 into I'm writing this one first and z minus 1 this bracket letter. Okay. So actually the same thing we have, just we have 1 plus z and here we have 1 plus z minus 1. That means at the place of z, we have z minus 1. So let us expand this one, okay, like that. Uh, uh, let me write here. So this is equal to 1 upon z minus 1. I am uh, writing its expansion, Lorentz expansion. So it will be 1 minus z minus 1 plus z minus 1 square minus z minus 1 cube plus and so on. Okay, so now what will I do? I will multiply each term by this 1 upon z minus 1. So the one bracket will get cancelled. So 1 into this one same z minus 1 z minus 1 cancel. One bracket will get cancelled if you multiply. One more bracket cancel uh, and the bracket square will be there. So now will you tell me what is the analytic part and what is the principal part? So obviously this bracket appears at numerator. So this is analytic part. Okay. So this is analytic part and this is a principal part having only one term. So we know that if in a principal part in a principal part of Lorentz expansion having finite number of terms, then we say it is a pole. So obviously it is a pole and tell me what will be its order. What is the power of this bracket? Nothing is there, that means power is 1, so it's a pole of order 1. So therefore, z is equal to 1 is a pole of order 1, okay? In this way, we have finish, okay? So we proved that z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 1, both are poles of order 1. Let us discuss one more example. Just make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. So this is second example hyperbolic sin z upon z is to 7 okay so we have to prove that it is a pole z is equal to 0 and we have to find its order okay so you can easily see if i put z is equal to 0 denominator will be 0 and the function won't be analytic so let me clearly mention clearly clearly z is equal to 0 is a singular point okay so it's a singular point that means at that point the function is not analytic since the denominator is zero now we have to prove that it is a pole so that's why we need to find its Lorentz expansion okay let us do that let me write the function again f of z is hyperbolic sin z upon z raised to 7 let me write this z raised to 7 outside into this hyperbolic sin z do you know there is a standard expansion of this hyperbolic sin z, okay? So that expansion, standard expansion I'm going to use, which is 1 upon z is to 7. Its expansion is z plus z cube by 3 factorial, z is to 5 by 5 factorial, z is to 7 by 7 factorial, z is to 9 by 9 factorial. This is a standard expansion, okay? We have hyperbolic signs, so that's why all signs are plus. If you have regular sign, signs are alternating plus and minus, okay? So hyperbolic sign, that's why all signs are plus. So let us solve the bracket. That means I will multiply each term by this 1 upon z is to 7. Let us see what will happen. If you multiply, 1z will get cancelled and z is to 6. If you multiply this term by 1 by z is to 7, uh, z cube, z cube cancel. You will have 3 factorial and z raised to 4 will be like this. If you multiply uh, this 1 by z raised to 7 into this one, z raised to 5 and 1 by z raised to 5 will get cancelled. 1 upon 5 factorial z square. If you, do, if you take the product of these two terms, z raised to 7 and 1 upon z raised to 7 will get cancelled. 1 upon 7 factorial, agree? If you take the product of these two terms, z raised to 7 will get cancelled and z square will be remaining there at numerator, 9 factorial and so on. So you can easily see in first three terms, z at higher power of z appears in denominator, but from this term, z uh, is appearing at numerator. So that's why you can say this is the analytic part. This is analytic part. And what is the principal part? 
सो दिस इज द प्रिंसिपल पार्ट राइट सो प्रिंसिपल पार्ट सो हाउ मेनी टर्म्स आर देयर इन प्रिंसिपल पार्ट वन टू थ्री ओनली थ्री टर्म्स आर देयर सो इफ प्रिंसिपल पार्ट हैविंग फाइनाइट नंबर ऑफ टर्म्स देन वी से इट इज अ पोल सो दैट्स वाई वी कैन डिक्लेयर जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज अ पोल सो देयर फोर जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज ए पोल सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज इट्स ऑर्डर वॉट इज द हाइएस्ट पॉवर ऑफ जेड इन डिनोमिनेटर सिक्स ओके हाइएस्ट पॉवर ऑफ जेड इज सिक्स इन डिनोमिनेटर सो इट्स अ पोल ऑफ ऑर्डर सिक्स सो इन दिस वे वी फाउंड आउट द ऑर्डर ऑफ दिस पोल एंड वी प्रूव इट इज अ पोल ओके जस्ट मेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ इट देन वी विल गो फर्दर सी इन लास्ट टू एग्जाम्पल्स वी प्रूव दैट गिव जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो और जेड इज इक्वल टू वन टू लाइक दैट दीज आर पोल्स एंड वी फाउंड इट्स ऑर्डर बट सी वेन यू हैव वेरी सिंपल फंक्शन जस्ट बाय ऑब्जर्विंग ऑल्सो यू कैन फाइंड इट्स ऑर्डर ओके For example, suppose we have a function like this: f of z is equal to z upon z minus one cube z minus two raised to four. So it's a very simple function. So you can easily see if I put z is equal to one, function denominator will be zero, function won't be analytic. So z is equal to one is a singular point. Similarly, z is equal to two is also singular point. Okay. So what is power of this bracket three? Power of this bracket is four. So z is equal to one. So I can clearly mention z is equal to one is a pole of order three, and here z is equal to two is a pole of order four. When you have very simple examples or very simple functions, then in that case, just by observing also you can find the order of pole. Okay. Just make a screenshot of it. Then we will stop. Thank you. See you in next video.